Hello everyone, thanks for joining us for another edition of Texas Insider TV brought to you by the Texas Alliance of Energy Producers. I'm Jim Cardle. Congressman Roger Williams represents the 25th Congressional District of Texas, which runs from south of Fort Worth through the Texas Hill Country, including Fort Hood, the world's largest military facility, and into the area just west of Austin, Texas. He's a member of the House Financial Securities Committee and is the author of two important pieces of legislation moving through Congress, the Jumpstart America Act, bringing small businessmen tax reform and ending the inheritance tax, as well as a bill to end the onerous Dodd-Frank legislation so important to community bankers across the country. What's the outlook for the summer stretch in this existing Congress under President Trump? We're pleased to be able to visit with Congressman Roger Williams from Congressional District 25 today. Congressman Williams from Congressional District 25, thanks for joining us today. I'm glad to be here. We've been talking and covering issues on Texas Insider about your press releases and about happenings in Congress, Congressional Affairs. Now we're on Congressional Recess. We appreciate you coming by. But let's just jump in, if I can, first, as we typically do. Tell us a little bit about Congressman Roger Williams. Your district goes from Fort Worth and Tarrant County down here to Austin and Hayes County. Give us a little thumbnail speak about your background. Well, I'm a business guy. Uh, as you know, uh, the, when I ran for Congress in 2012, I ran because I didn't think there was any business people representing me mm -hmm. in the United States Congress. and So I'd never been elected to anything. I'd been selected to do some stuff, but never elected. So we ran in 2012, 13 people in the primary, and, and we won with a pro-business entrepreneurial message and uh, with a smile on our face. And uh, so we're heading. We're going to be heading into our fourth term, which... Uh, I'm honored to serve in Congress and honored to serve District 25, which is a very unique district. It is. Uh, as you said, we go all the way from uh, South Fort Worth all the way into Wimberley. And uh, as I tell people, we, uh, we are very diverse in the fact we represent the University of Texas. We represent Comanche Peak Nuclear Plant. We represent the Barnett Shale. Uh, we represent Tarleton State University. We have the largest population of dairy farmers anywhere in the state or right in our district. Really? Uh, we've got the Blue Bonnet Cafe and the Billy the Kid Museum. So it's a unique <laughs> district and uh, so forth and one I'm honored to represent. And, and Fort Hood too. We'll and get Fort to Hood, that. the great place. In a, in a minute. Um, quite a district you're talking about there. I know it's one of the, the more uniquely shaped, so mm -hmm. to speak. But let's just jump in real quick in respect for your time um, to a big, big issue, and certainly it's been in the news the last couple of weeks since the election of President Donald Trump, and that's tax reform. You have long been an advocate, as you mentioned, as a businessman, and you've come up with a plan called Jumpstart America. I want to get into the details about that and the outlook. Tell us what your what your plan does and what you're working on. Well, we have one of the highest tax rates in the world, and, and we wonder what jobs leave here never come back and so forth so I worked on a plan frankly the last four years called Jumpstart America mm -hmm. that empowers the greatest asset we have small business owners in America to help cash flow America you know okay. we, we we don't really have a cash flow problem we have a huge spending problem and uh, until uh, until the federal government addresses that spending problem the only people in cash flow America is small business owners Main Street America so we've come up with a plan which uh, We've been talking about it from coast to coast, presented to President Trump uh, just several weeks ago. Good. And basically what it does, uh, uh, we, we cut the corporate income tax, we cut the personal, we cut the uh, cap gains and dividends, we cut payroll taxes, uh, we do away the inheritance tax, most unfair tax anywhere in the world. We allow 100% expensing on fixed assets if someone chooses to do that uh, as opposed to scheduling. Uh, we uh, also repatriate this money that's overseas with two, three trillion dollars. Okay. Uh, we repatriate it five percent. We do it every single year. It's not a holiday. Every single year, and I'd like to see that money go in the highway trust fund to help rebuild our roads and bridges, or uh, even uh, even go to help pay for the tax cuts we're going to have. So uh, it's simple. It doesn't pick winners and losers. Uh, it's good for big business. It's good for small business. But what it will do, Jim, is it will cash flow our country. And, uh, and, and what we need to do, too, with tax reform, we need to give the taxpayers tax reform and tax cuts to, to help them. And then we don't need to come over here and say, I'm going to give you a tax cut. Oh, my, I'm going to raise your taxes, like with a border tax. Mm -hmm. A border tax is, is a non-starter. There's a lot of ways to pay for, for, for tax cuts, tax reform, uh, other than taxing people again. So uh, we believe that the federal government should let, us, let small businesses cash flow, and then the federal government should address massive tax, I mean, or massive cuts in government. Government's got to get smaller. 
uh, waste, fraud, and abuse, and all those kind of things. That's what the federal government needs to do, and not ask the taxpayers to do it. Makes me think of two things. Um, back in 1986, I remember people said generally that tax reform gored everybody's ox or stepped on all the toes. It sounds what you're talking about here is a more positive, proactive type, particularly the death tax maybe, but it's it's not necessarily a reform of all the tax breaks and the carve-outs and that right. type right. of thing. We, we don't talk about loopholes. We don't talk about deductions. Mm -hmm. We talk about cash flow. And if you're a business or you're a family and you're losing $1,000 a month, we'll say, Mm -hmm. uh, you've got to you, you, you've got to you can't go borrow money to pay for that thousand or you don't cut five dollars you have to cut a thousand dollars so mm -hmm. we're talking about uh, a business model selling our product selling it for margin and having the federal government do what they're supposed to do look at the taxpayers didn't put ourselves in a twenty trillion dollar debt the federal government did so let the federal government get us out that out, out of that and let the taxpayers cash flow and begin to get America back again because we're a consumption driven nation as you know mm -hmm. and if people make money they spend money whether they're business or individuals and, and uh, this plan of Jumpstart America will do that and will not have people worry can I deduct my home mortgage interest can I give, still give to charity yes you can before we move on to military affairs let me just ask you because we had uh, the, the repeal and replace effort uh, fall short mm -hmm. what's the mood right now of, of you members of Congress and the, not necessarily the working back and forth with the Senate, but a lot of Americans, I think, are coming at that falling short on Obamacare uh, as a big, big setback. However, others disagree and think that there's still an opportunity for Congress to do many positive things. What's the mood of the Congress you, Look, you see right now? We're less than 100 days into this administration. Right. Uh, Donald Trump is doing it a lot. He's doing a lot with executive orders and, and, and that sort of thing. I think one of the problems we created was putting a, a date on to come up with mm -hmm. health care. I think that was, a, that was a problem. But look, uh, we're going to get back next week. Uh, we're going to look, it appears we're going to look at another, an, another yes. concept of mm -hmm. what we can do. But uh, Obamacare is the worst legislation we've seen in our lifetime. It's destroying jobs. It's destroying businesses. It's destroying families. It's got to get fixed. And uh, I think the fact that we didn't pass the first time was a combination of a lot of people not knowing what was out there mm -hmm. and until right at, the, right at the end, a lot of communications. I'm a retail guy. I'm used to selling. We could have done a better job. Mm -hmm. Our leadership could have done a better job at selling what it was. But it didn't happen. And you've so, got to learn how to govern. You got, that's right. So, uh, you know, we're going to take a look at it again. I think we'll come up with uh, something. There's a lot of things I want to see in it, quite frankly. I mean, I want to see individuals own their own health care, not the government. Mm -hmm. I want to shop across state lines. Yeah. I want to make it portable. I want businesses to be able to pool their resources and get a better deal. Yeah. I want to see all that. So we'll see what we come up with uh, when we get back. And then after that, hopefully embark on uh, some tax reform tax. debate. Well, folks, I want to thank you again for joining us for this edition of Texas Insider TV, brought to you by the Texas Alliance of Energy Producers. We're visiting with Congressman Roger Williams, member of the Financial Services Committee, um, talking about tax reform. Let's shift now to the fact that you represent Fort Hood. There's been a number of military engagements, so to speak, or activities the past couple weeks. What do you think so far in terms of President Trump's uh, foreign policy and activities, and, and what's the mood of Fort Hood, perhaps? Well, the mood of Fort Hood is always, let's get let's go. I mean, yes. it, Fort Hood is the great place, the largest military base we have in America, 342 square miles, as I like to tell people, bring it on. Really? So the attitude is great, and we love going to Fort Hood because those young men and women that serve our country, uh, they're, they love their job, they mm -hmm. love their country, and it's empowering to be around them. Mm -hmm. I think what we've seen from President Trump, uh, I don't know if it's his policy or not, but I think he's done the right thing. For eight years, our enemies didn't fear us, and for eight years, our friends didn't trust us. Mm -hmm. And uh, President Trump now, with his, uh, uh, with his statement that this country made uh, uh, with uh, the Tomahawk missiles in Syria was the right thing to do. I mean, you merely had to watch TV and see what Assad was doing to his people. I mean, that's mm -hmm. hard to take, and, and we have to send a message because I believe that America must be the dominant military player in the world. If not, we see the world will implode. In the last eight years, we've seen the world begin to implode. Mm -hmm. Well, he turned that around that night. He said, look, at America is back. America is strong. Mm -hmm. You must do the right thing. Uh, Geneva Convention, who's going to enforce it if we don't enforce it? 
So I thought he did the right thing. I thought he did the right thing too uh, with, uh, with with uh, the Moab, a new word we have in our uh, right. in our in our our, our, our right now. Yeah, economy. the Moab. So look at uh, North Korea is a real problem. Uh, the uh, Kim Jong Un uh, is a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got to be addressed. We should have addressed it years ago, and each time we don't address it, it gets worse. So now is the time to address it. It appears that he's been able to get the Chinese a certain extent on board, more than a lot of people ever thought. I mean, and you know, we've got Russians out there with their, their bare bombers with propellers on the back uh, running around, but, and the only friend that, that Putin has is Iran and Syria. Mm -hmm. Now that's a that's a good group of friends to have, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So I think that President Trump, he's in the right place at the right time. He's surrounding himself with good people. Uh, he is listening to his generals, which I think you need to do. Good. That's part of my platform. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's letting the world know America's back, America's strong, and America uh, wants peace. Uh, but we also believe in humankind. Well put. Um of, of somebody once said, the single most important duty for Congress is to provide our, for our national defenses. That was yeah. one Roger Williams in front of the Appropriations Committee in Congress. What's the outlook for, and, and people don't realize the extent the Texas economy depends right. on military affairs. You have a front row seat with Fort Hood. What's the outlook for defense spending. Well, the biggest tragedy we've seen through the last eight years in the Obama administration was the requirement of the military to take a trillion dollars in cuts to really? the military, a thing called sequestration. Mm -hmm. And what we've got to do, I've got a bill uh, that we uh, filed just the other day to get the military out of sequestration, let them get on their own budget, let Excellent. the generals run their business mm -hmm. of defending America. Mm -hmm. But look, at we've cut, the military's had to cut a trillion dollars in the last eight years. That's just unbelievable. And what has it done to us? It's seen us go from a million two-man army to a 400,000-man army. It's seen us right. go from 7,000 tanks to 2,000 tanks. So it just goes on and on and on. And the generals will tell you it's hard to fight a war. And we're looking at a time right now that if what if North Korea decided to bomb Seoul today? Mm -hmm. And then what if Iran decided they'd go after Israel? We've got to be able to move. Yeah. And in the past, America's been able to do that. But right now, we're not. Our, our Navy's down. Uh, to some levels from pre-World War I, uh, and uh, you know, uh, we can't even, uh, some of our living quarters on our bases have even been condemned so our kids can't live in them. So what's happened to our military is serious, it is a tragedy, and I want to be able to do as, I, as somebody who represents Fort Hood and, and, and America, well, we all love our military and our kids, mm -hmm. we want to give them the best because we've got the best and brightest fighting for us. So let's get the military out of sequestration, let's let them get on a budget. Let's let the generals run the business of defending America, and then we'll get on to these other issues. i got to give you credit for uh, your efforts a couple years ago, passing legislation, I believe, to give Purple Heart Awards yes. to all the victims of the 2009 Fort Hood bombing. But let's uh, change subjects a little bit and ask you one final question, Congressman, and that has to do, as a former banker myself, you were on the financial institutions committee, a very, very important committee in Washington, D.C., headed up by our own Texas Congressman Jeb Henschelling. You were on a key subcommittee, and you're working on repeal of what a lot of folks, frankly, it's surprising, know what it means. Mm -hmm. Dodd-Frank for Mr. Dodd, the senator, and Barney Frank, the congressman, and repealing efforts to get our economy growing again. What are your, uh, out, what's your outlook? Mm -hmm. It has taken jobs, it destroyed really? families, it destroyed businesses. The problem is it doesn't get the press that Obama yeah. uh, gets. So uh, being on financial services, being on the monetary subcommittee that's directly involved with Dodd-Frank, uh, we're in the process of uh, changing that. Dodd-Frank legislation has, has done more to hurt the economy than anything. It's destroyed community banks. It's put regulations out there that banks and lending institutions cannot you, they can't stay up with. It's still not in full force. It's about halfway in force of all the regulations it has. And we, you know, the other day I saw a number: eight hundred and eighty billion dollars had been sucked out of the economy just through the through regulations people really? have had to try to try to meet. So, uh, what we're going to do is we have a, 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 a vehicle called the Choice Act, okay. uh, which we're going to be uh, debating next week. We're going to mark it up as they say. We're going to try to get it out of committee and get it on the House floor. Is choice an acronym? Or it, it is. is. Okay. It is. And, uh, and don't ask me what it says. Yes, it's that's choice right. acronym. Okay. But, uh, but what it simply does, in, in, in a nutshell, it does away with things like too big to fail. I mean, who thought of that? This is America. Mm -hmm. You know, it lets banks have an option if they carry more capital, they can opt out of Dodd-Frank. 
there's yeah there's uh, there's just a lot of components in there that free people up. It takes this unelected five-member bureaucratic board, the CFPB, that sits getting bigger and bigger. That Elizabeth Warren headed up right. under the Obama administration right. consumer, consumer protection yeah. agency well, what we that really protects need, nobody. Probably. What we really need is government protection agency, but we don't have that. Mm -hmm. But 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 we have with that it begins to get the private sector uh, more involved. Uh, it will let people do business with people again, let the consumer drive the economy and not have the federal government driving the economy. Look, at in Texas, we've got the best economy there is. We haven't had any bank startups in years. It's true. We've had bank closures. Yeah. We've had the good banks, the community banks that you and I and your listeners all deal with. Mm -hmm. They've had to been, they've merged with bigger banks because they can't keep up mm -hmm. with the idea they're hi hiring more compliance officers than they are loan officers, for crying out loud. Yeah. You see? And it just drips down to everybody. People are not able to get a home improvement loan now. People can't finance a house. In many cases, people can't finance a car. It's all because of Dodd-Frank uh, making these businesses have to play defense because of the requirements and so forth. So we, we've got to, we're going to take that on and hopefully we, all this can happen uh, this summer. President, uh, President Trump the other day in one of his press conferences helped us all out by saying that one of the things he wants to do is do a number on Dodd-Frank. So that's good. And you know, and just real quick, and the interesting thing about it is Barney Frank, who I don't agree with on anything. Former congressman former from Massachusetts. Congressman, as you said, Dodd Frank, mm -hmm. he made the he made the, the, the comment that the mistake they made with Dodd Frank was not carving out the, the banks or lending institutions for fifty billion dollars or less. Interesting. Well, that's everybody Holy that cow. we all do business with, yeah. you know, and community banks. So that alone you would think we could get that done. But right now, it's very divisive on the committee. Uh, Dodd Frank is an Obamacare type trophy for the liberals, mm -hmm. and uh, but it's horrible legislation, and we're going to fix it. Well, good luck on that. Another effort moving toward your jumpstart messaging, which I love. I want to ask you one final question. We'll let you go because it's been two weeks Easter recess. You are as hard a working congressman as there is. You've been all across the state, probably, let alone your district. What have you heard the last couple of weeks? How are folks in Texas feeling? Well. People are proud they're Texans, they're glad they're in Texas, but they're also fed up with Congress. Mm -hmm. I must tell you that. I really? mean, you know, and if you're, if you're a conservative like we all are, uh, we've got the White House, we've got the Senate, and we've got the, the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. Why can't we get things done? Mm -hmm. So uh, people are fed up, and they don't mind telling you, and I'm fed up, and we have, to, we have to come together and find common themes that we can get going. I want our president to have victories. Mm -hmm. He got elected, and he deserved victories, and he's working really hard. And so we've got to get, we've got to fix health, we've got to do something on health care, we've got to do something on tax reform, we've got to do something on securing the border, we've got to fix this military, get it out of sequestration, we've got to prove the bill I got. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody needs to get on that. Uh, we need to do the Dodd-Frank legislation, let, let banks and community banks and Main Street breathing in. This is the things we can do. Mm -hmm. For crying out loud, we have all three branches. Yeah. So we've got to come together and find reasons to make a deal, not giving up core principles. I mean, nobody's more conservative than I am. I mean, mm -hmm. I've got 100% rating for Freedom Works. Okay. But but we've got to be able to make some deals and get this big government moving and help our president. He was elected by the people. They expect something. And I hope we begin to get the, some of these major things done by July 4th. Well, Congressman Roger Williams, you've got, I love your passion. You've got plenty of things going. Appreciate your hard work for, our, for us Texans in behalf of our nation. Thank you for what you do. God bless you. Appreciate that, folks. We appreciate Congressman Roger Williams from Congressional District 25 coming in to join us. Hope you'll come back in the future, Roger. And folks, hope you'll tune in again to the next issue of Texas Insider TV. Remember, you're either an insider or you're not. I'm Jim Cardle. Thanks for joining us.